So this is so this is the beginner's guide. I heard um this is made by the creator of Stanley's Parable and was a fan of that game. So I also heard that this game is good for if you lack motivation in the creative field, something like that. It's like a really good story. Yeah, I was just interested. I wanted to see what this was like. What are the options though? New controller recommended laptop power saving. This was like fourteen dollars after tax or something. Canadian. This is actually a pretty old game. It was released in 2015, it sells on Steam. Alright, let's start. Make sure audio is on. Check. Oh shoot. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. Hmm. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. Need to turn down the sensitivity. But also, I heard this was just a narrative game. Not really about the gameplay or mechanics or anything like that. It's all about the story. I thought this was maybe perfect for YouTube content I'm trying to do. Uh... But what I like is that he- Oh, sense it. Even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town. Yes. And instead, this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of mm. makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as okay. games, but that they are all going to give I us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's this. exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's Most why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because Oop. I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. This one feels so much smaller. What happened? What happened there? The game just crashed. Oh. This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda shoot but no sound for shooting. 
can't go that way. Whisper machine stops active. Evacuate immediately. Security hole breached. Hostile alien life forms inbound. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid development. For mm -hmm. instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. Oh, but ultimately, bullets. we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy force neutralized. Begin to No sprint. I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. <laughs> Where are those there? Oh. I suppose I know which way. Oh, okay. Apparently, this space station has a labyrinth on it. I, uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Oh, okay. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering the whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. My body? It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? Give yourself. We're just forced to sacrifice? Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Again. Interesting. Ends up just flying. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, but what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. Okay. Yep, in this game you can only walk backwards. Oh, the past was behind her. You fall in there? So it's a short Checking and relatively see. minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the keep previous changing. game, but actually it seems to be more focused, the more complete. Keep changing. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. Ups and looks here. Oh. But if the future is always behind her... <laughs> so nothing updates until you walk past... But Backwards. How will she find? Who 
confront... It's a short little thought, it says what it ends. wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Which, to me, is why it works. Because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. That one was interesting. Entering... And that's it! Okay, uh -oh. the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Not entering. But... Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. Oh. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like... That was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you going to do? You're getting slower. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Coda's not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Okay. What was the point? So much text. Nothing but giant blocks. A room that's warm, and nice, and filled with little ideas for games. Oh. Koda would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. Series of lab. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was interesting. A bunch of ideas. You could jump. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. Hmm. No prompt. I don't know. Does this mean I can't solve it? Don't forget that solution, because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. We're gonna see it I a lot. I solved it. What is these? I saw these before. Three circles mean anything? Once you drop, you're locked in. Anna? So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve the puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Alright, now I'm going to modify the game again, so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. What is the point? How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. 
or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? Huh. I'm back here. Oh no. Uh -huh. Exit. So this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. It goes side to There's side. a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in. Some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Oh nine. The Great and Lovely Descent. Whoa. Let's talk about video game development Houses. for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. Can you fall? This is under that house. supposed to fall we were just supposed to fall all the way down Can you get into this? What the stairs are wrapping some invisible cylinder thing. Prison. Funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. Hmm. We're out. 
outside. Really? It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. With this room. This is still the prison. Listen. Where'd you, where'd you Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Did you come from above? What was up there? Yes, there was a world stamped with whiteness. Yes, there was an enormous prison I spent hours in. Yes, there were these floating colored blocks. Blocks. The world above, you've been there. Did you have to get through the puzzle with two doors and switches? Literally, the thing, last thing I did before coming here. No, I don't remember having to go through any puzzle. Or not to tell you, after all, we've only just met. Wonder. But, but you don't understand, we are trapped here, that puzzle is the only way, the you know, our only escape. We need to get through it. Think. Not to get it through. Trust me, you don't. Let me describe it for you, let me tell you all about what is over there. Alright, I'll tell you how to solve it. Uh, two. Oh, that isn't possibly enough. I need there. I cannot simply be told what it is. I must see it myself. If this present, there must be an ending. Or oh, instantly closes. <coughs> what is this round, round two? How'd you get here? Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? You know what? You want to know how to solve it? No, I've been right here this entire time. Just you go see the puzzle sometime. It's not meant to be solved, but you can sit in the black space in the middle. What happens if I solve it? Why, why would I sit in the black space? Who are you? Plenty peaceful. Not may not seem that way at first, but you'll come. We just keep going. Just keep going. And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Outside again. Close. It's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination. Which is what this hmm. lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, 
a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. And post. Objective. Roll 09. Doesn't end. This game is connected to the internet. You walk around, you can leave notes. You see are left by other players. You got whispers. This room not. So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this Maybe game is this not game. connected to the internet. All of no the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. Yeah, I this was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend Whoa, game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I you saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was Whoa. doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with Reasonable. this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit met. too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything Balls. for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Either way, King to me they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. But it's ironic, isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. Hmm. I could just get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Coda's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. Acorn somewhere. Pillars are looking for it. Looking for someone to talk with. I refuse to believe. But ass but need to go to the freaking bathroom. Recognize me please. This was during a game jam, yeah. Listen to that guy. A free t shirt. Make games include store. You know, open door. Thanks. <laughs> or how open? Need other side door while you go. Someday I'll meet the person who made this. Interesting. A lot of people because of internal good feeling. New room, big painting. Hear the chimes? Tired. Very crowded. Scared of writing something, don't want to feel jump. Where you leave notes and suddenly everyone's a poet. You can go in here, I think. You can go in here, I think. Um, congratulations, I don't really know where to go with this. Oh? No. Then we don't have to read everything. Turn back, proceed further, will only result in misery. Jump. I mean, he went down there. You cannot jump.
Doesn't matter if you even get over there. Don't talk about me like that way. I think I'm this. What is not going anywhere? Need someone to talk to. This is a note question mark. Don't listen to the other notes. I'm not safe. Painting, what does it mean? Or made this has issues? You think so? I'm gonna speak. Think about how things look messy from up far away. That's interesting. And up here just looks like dots. Cabbage shapes our nation. What? Well, at least it doesn't mean anything. Devil Tower Star. Bunch of interpretations. About how this game is pretentious and you all suck. Stop pretending you and other people. You are other people. We'll all die someday. He was himself the most horrible creature you could imagine. Well, I'm here now. Must be a reason for it, though. Horrible secrets. He kept. Beat the game. Wait, what? He kept it well. More room? At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. Hmm. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. One note. Right there. Destination. Did they have to say something? They're all typing speak. June resonating. I made porn stars. Okay, this one is tough. It's gonna kinda just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. I made a lot of mini games. See, like, this is it. The whole game. And there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it. You just walk to the end of a hallway. 
Except, for some reason, Cody gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's gonna start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, cool, here's version two. Furniture. Up in the center. How about TV? Bridge? A giant hole in the ground? Huge picture of a horse. And stoves lined up. What? Touches. It light up this room. Full ceiling window. Tesla coil. Table, you need table. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh. Uh, there's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness's sake. Okay, okay, he throws it out and starts over. This time he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. Hello, please walk forward. What if you walk backward? This guide will enable you to escape any prison. Follow instructions carefully that take care that you remember each step. I'm gonna forget. First click on this table. Go over to the photo frame and click to turn it slightly. Turn the floor lamp in this room off. Back on. Go left side sofa, move it over a little. Touch the shelves. That's it, in, in a real prison, the escape will now open. And the start be taken back to your prison. Uh, am I gonna remember all that? Table, picture, lamp, couch, shelves. Return. And of course, now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. Oh, of course. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside and the outside is the inside. Oh. Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen. Personally, I think it's awful to watch this. To see a person basically unraveling through their work. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop, that particular mechanism of defense against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going, and then he hits on something. And he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is on? the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. We're just free. Is that a phone booth? Booth. Yeah, move. Who is this? 
Me and you from after you escape prison. Though you were trapped in this prison too. Future. It's a conversation. Furniture and so me. this is what Coda wants, is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. You know, all of these games so far are Coda talking to himself. I'd like to escape. Like being completely still and wildly in motion at the same time. Strange but in a way. It's being in the prison. I'm already forgetting about being in the prison was like. Any different? We'll get out. Or no, I'm really the same person now as I was back then. If it does change, I don't feel like the same person at all. Hard one. <clears throat> don't worry, actually, actually not a bad thing. I promise. Get something else in exchange. Problem is that you don't actually. Who you are right now? Hear me. Then did you get a call from another version of you? Trapped. Um. No. I think I'm the first person to call back. Tell me how to get out. Have to do. Yeah, you have to. All you have to do is be sincere. You need to tell me how you feel right now. To get out, just talk with me for a bit. What? That will free me? How does that work? You can't. No, until you're out, but I promise it works. Yeah, I can talk. Talk for a bit. Will you be here? Be here for as long as you need. I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. So what would it look like if Coda wanted to make a game about talking to someone other than himself? Hmm. This environment is meant to represent Coda's puzzle, with the two doors on either side and a dark transitional space between. I should have gone to the other one. Clean. Exit. Everyone knows Lonesome Hands and me. Fuzzy home. You'll notice that the quality of the art is a step up from previous games, including this new and improved chat system, which he started using from this point on. From here on out, he begins putting much more effort into the visual polish of his work, and this particular game took two months to create as a result. Here the tape. Please run into the bathroom, bedroom. It said something. Bring out the rug a bit. Do 
you enjoy being cleaner? It's been a long time since I've seen it. Cheesy personal insight. <laughs> Especially cheesy. No. These dishes need to be washed. Nice. Pick the tub. to be perfect. Oh, there's a connecting. Put them back on the shelves. Yeah, dishes off the table. After the intense set of prison games, this house cleaning level almost feels like cleansing. It's the moment after a particularly difficult or traumatic experience where you just need to let it sit and digest inside of you, and eventually cohere into something meaningful. Absolutely go got to. I know that Coda really liked this game. Of all of his work, actually, this was the only one that he called me up to ask me to come over and look at it. This was during a period of a few months where he was, like, grossly happy all the time. Just walked around with a constant smile on his face. When I say that, it occurs to me that one's heart likes one's soul. care of you. Oh, I felt so weird about saying that. There's a bit of truth in it, no? I get it, it's a weird thing to say, so... Anyway. Oh, let's keep it. Let's keep doing this. Books. I'm glad he made this. I'm glad he found some peace. Question. But, you enjoy of course, this? it can't last. The music stops, your companion is gone, it's time to leave. The door at the top of the hill is now open as well. Again, mm. you can't stay in the dark space for too long. You just can't. You have to keep moving. It's how you stay alive. Alive. Destination. Which is the whole point of the puzzle doors, right? That sooner or later you have to pick up and move. I really thought that was the point of it. A tree. Number 2009. This one gets a bit Love goofy. It. Where'd you come in? Google your life. Relationships more meaningful. Aim here to become perfect. There's teleport. Trap teaches you how to be perfect. I want your friends, people in your life. Look at you and think. Person is a better human being than I am. Who 
is so well developed as a person that they make you feel disgusted with yourself. Grasp. Now, how do we do it? About halfway through the game, the perspective shifts. the speaker and you play as the teacher and suddenly this. you discover that your teacher is just as bigoted and afraid as you are oh and also you can move around the classroom now this is the key how do i achieve it with no effort it should not follow their dream and the way to work for the only person to start contributing to society Still pick. Here. Let me tell you right now, if it is an effortless thing, I still love you. I just that you make me feel cold and sad. Being alone must be off. Goodness, all of you perceive me as being wise and intelligent. You're torturing yourself. Your life. Drinking your life. You understand you won't be happy until you love me. This is for you. Thing is the easiest, simplest path forward. Ew, helping assist, gross. I don't know what to do there. Just kidding. Anyone want to do some ecstasy after this? Good teacher. Who is easiest to feel what is true? Holy shit, you guys something coming out of the back. Thing. Black hole. Nothing, no one is coming for you, it's going to destroy you. Thing. I felt pretty hard for this one. I feel like it's one of the most relatable experiences that you can have. To uh, assume that some other person is perfect and totally fulfilled in every way and completely miss all of the little flaws that make them painfully human. I think about this game a lot these days. 2010. This one took a lot longer than all the others for Coda to make. It was four months between this and the last one. That's twice as long as it took him to make any other game before this, and it's not like it's particularly complex, so I remember I found that a little strange at the time. Hey. Faces. against the wall. An old photographer who dreamed to photograph animals. A chance to learn something. Hello. But again, I like you. Super scared.
slightly missing the tone of the conversation. Curve, but for some reason, just a moment of. Tones have been. Represent the people. Um. Sacrifice you have to make? Really hard. You learn to lean into the pain. Back from the stage. Destination. We have to keep going, don't we? Lee, prison. Ah. The game ends with this eerie premonition of what's going to happen next in Coda's life. The solution to social anxiety, to fears of having to perform and having to chase success, the answer for Coda is to withdraw, to hide himself away. Which is what leads to scenarios like the stairs that slowed you down several games ago, where it just becomes harder and harder to access Coda's inner landscape because he keeps retreating. He just keeps backing away from possible connections to anyone other than himself. And to be honest, I didn't consider it very healthy when I first played this game. You know, it, it looked to me like he was trying to justify the idea of just disconnecting yourself from the world. And that wasn't what I wanted for him or for his games. Because I feel like a lot of his games are inviting me to connect. To connect with this person. To bring him closer. Mm. But what can you do? After this, Coda went off and took another five months to make a new game. Mobius trip to play this game properly. Click the beginning game. I'm gonna pause here. Okay, I'm back. Took a lunch break. I was thinking, what if at the end of this, it's just like a compilation of all the games that he's made, like all the features that he thought were good, and it all came together into one good game? Maybe. We'll see. Maybe it comes to nothing. I don't know. But we'll continue here. Uh, to play this game properly, you must keep your eyes closed. Click to begin. Uh, okay. Are you really supposed to have eyes closed? Cause like I'm not gonna lie, I cheated a little bit. Oh, okay. You should probably open your eyes if you haven't already. It's pretty much impossible oh. to solve otherwise. Okay. And there is a solution, by the way. Actually move around. Oh, I'm blind. What's going on? Oh, we collide with that, I'm guessing. That door. I'm gonna be killed by a giant door. Yeah. Okay. I have to get up there. Help. This is the help I'm blind. Whisper. Oh, there's a door. Destination. Oh, I failed that still. The door closed. Open. Oh, no, it opened. Truth. The only way to stop is to speak something that is honest. 
Bursting with creative energy, I can't keep my... I can't keep making these. That's the truth. I don't feel like any I more said, I was getting concerned. First it's off, draining. he's never been this explicit in his work about exactly what he's thinking. So, where's that coming from? But then, even weirder, his work has potentially stopped being an outlet for him. <clears throat> Not like he's having trouble iterating on ideas, but he literally just can't just think of new talking. ideas anymore. And in person, he was being a lot more distant than usual. Like, you know how sometimes a person stuff. will just deflect anything that you say in order to keep themselves yeah. disconnected all the time? It was that kind of thing. Here was the point Might in my relationship with Coda where I really started to wonder if he needed my help in some way. I haven't been honest. I can't figure out how to say the things I thought it was going to be easy. I can't figure out how to say the things. You're doing it. It's working. I'm alone. I'm stuck in it. Work harder. Oh, is there an option for all three? I'm gonna be okay. His games are going to get more desperate from here on out. After this game, it's almost hmm. six months before he finishes something new. It gets longer and longer. Hello? Where did this island come from? How do I get out of here? Oh, is anyone there? That a person? How lovely. It's been a long time since I talked to anyone. What's wrong? You look lost. Completely out of ideas. I'm trying to create. When I try to create, I feel empty. I have nothing left to give to my life. When I try to create, I feel empty. Probably the most relatable right now. Something change. It was a machine that kept me going and it stopped. I'm trying to find this engine that used to protect me and start again. Maybe the first one. Is music. Wait, you're looking for a machine? I think I know where it is. It isn't far. What? You have to take me to it. I need to see it. I know why I stopped. <clears throat> I can take you to it, but if there's the a problem. If the last game featured Coda talking explicitly about his puzzle. creative frustrations, this one turns it up to 11. Now, put yourself in my shoes playing this. <coughs> Here's a friend whose work is exhibiting signs of struggle, frustration, anxiety, depression, even. And yet, still, he keeps making games. He keeps throwing himself into the grinder even when he clearly doesn't have the energy for it anymore. Why? What is it for? Doesn't matter what I say or does it. I'm gonna end up right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up there one way or another, right? I said three. Is that a deal? Interesting. Perfect. Come along, I'll show you. Solve a puzzle. From my perspective at the time, and, and just what I knew of him, back. this was a result of how isolated he was. He was oh, in can't. his own little bubble, just sitting at his computer all day, not really showing these games to anyone, uh, not releasing them onto the internet, and so he didn't have anyone outside of himself to connect with. He had no outlet to ground himself on. First you have to close the door, first you have to open the door, first you have to press the switch from the inside. But we're not on the inside. You have to... oh. Go open the door. Now what?
close the first door. Press the switch here. You can't talk yourself out of loneliness. It doesn't work that way. You can't be the one writing both the questions and the answers. Then there's no movement. Then there's no circulation. If all of your anxieties are being channeled into your work, then if the work ever fails, you have no backup and you're just going to crash. What are you talking about? There's no machine here. Birds on some walls. Trust me, you'll see. These are all the prompts I've selected. You have to say that your work is fun and easy. You have to say that game development is simple and joyous. And that you love it 100% of the time. Um, in games is effortless. Game is simple. Feels wonderful. Why did the walls crumble? Why did I feel awful when I said that? It wasn't true. Don't worry, just keep talking. Keep saying creation is easy. When I make games, I feel completely energized when I'm consistently excited and enthusiastic about my work. I am consistently excited and enthusiastic about my work. It is easy, it never stops being easy. Part two. Seeing this game at the time that he made it, it looked really unhealthy to me. I was watching Every him do this to himself, himself, and I hated it. I hated seeing him so trapped. Just it's never like, stop creating. Video games are not worth this amount of suffering. Never stop creating, you'll never feel bad. This is someone I really cared about. And I used to get so much joy out of seeing him create. For him to suddenly become angry and frustrated like this, it was the worst the thing from for me. Previous games. These where is the machine? I'm gonna vomit, none of this is helping. Patience, you have to trust me. I promise it'll work. Or some sacrifice. It's been a long time since I've seen a house this messy. Pain breezes effortlessly off me. Always, it always pays off eventually. Any sacrifices made for my work are worth it 100% of the time. Getting bigger? I don't know. This is what I felt at the time. I don't know how else to explain it. I wanted it to stop more than anything. I had never felt so rotten. I just... I needed more than I had ever needed anything for this to stop. <clears throat> there is no shame, no fear, no guilt. It will be saved by my work. I believe this unquestioningly. I am a vessel of certainty. Back to the prison. I'm free. But it didn't stop. After finishing this one, Coda takes another seven months and comes up with a new game. I'm gonna have to apologize for the rest of the video up until after the credits, maybe. For some reason, the audio messed up and just started crackling at random points in the video from this point on until after the credits, really. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Seven. Oh, now it's the machine. Hello. Glad to see you've arrived. Captain Machines waiting for you. 
Begin the interrogation. Brutal, quiet, or quick? Brutal. Very good. Be warned that someone called the pro out of attention. Called itself Coda. Poisonous games have. Did you find the machine? Please give us answers. And of course, it's the machine. Feeding us, your work is keeping us alive, keeping us healthy, you stop feeding us. People out there, can you imagine what pain you've put them through? A lot because your creations that any of us couldn't make it through every day. How can we possibly go back to trusting you to do this job? to happen. You have to go to the people who are out there and apologize for them, to them. You have to admit to the people that you allowed them to suffer. You've been so alone. Apologize for leaving me. No, nothing. Think carefully. I know how to hurt you. Seeing the thing you fear. Alright, then I will apologize to the people on your back. Followers, my friends. Interesting. It falls on me to deliver the bad news. I have a troubling revelation. The machine will not apologize to us. The machine refuses to admit that it delivered. But this is not important. We are strength stronger than it thinks we are. We will find a way to live without it. We do not need its gift. Let us pay retribution. To show it, we are not. Follow me, we will destroy the machine. Follow me, we will destroy everything the machine has created. Back to stage. Gone to
so now the work is becoming self-destructive. And I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head, and that it's having a very negative effect on him, and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work to people, to get some actual feedback on his games. It might get him out of isolation. And so, as I'm thinking this, I realized that I could be the one to initiate it. Because it would never occur to Code to start actively soliciting feedback, so what if I did it for it? If he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings, would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Would it give him confidence in himself? Would it bring meaning back into his work? Every map. So I started showing Coda's work to people. I took this one, and the islands which you just played, the theater, the notes, the house cleaning game, and some of the prison escape games. I brought them to people that I knew and trusted. I asked their opinions. And the great part is that they really loved his game. You know, the point of it all was just to give him some external reference point, but they, they genuinely loved his work. There was nothing for him to be afraid of. Cutscene, wow. Blocking the destination. Your weapon down. You can't move, you only shoot. Can you see why I felt like this was the right thing to do? Because it's the thing that I always feel like I need to be told that my work is good, that I am good. When, when someone really connects with a thing that I've made, when they see themselves purely in my work, you can there's nothing to that shoot. feels better. And I got I, to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something... Th I really felt like I'd done something good, like, like I was a good person. I felt like there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves, and I, I could fix it. What's if happening? I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. When they told me how much they enjoyed his game, it was the best feeling. It was the absolute best feeling. It, it made me feel so happy. So beautifully, beautifully happy. So anyway, Koda finishes this game, and then really he just kind of takes off for a while. So this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Uh, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email, and it's got a private link to a new game of Koda's. This one is called The Tower, and to my knowledge, it's the last game that Koda ever made. So let's take a look. 2011. And this is where I have trouble saying anything meaningful about Koda's work. Because more than anything else, the tower just feels distant. It feels like it's trying to distance itself from the world. It's a very, very cold game. Pretty tall. This room actually has a maze in it. Except that all the walls of the maze are invisible. And then every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise. So the experience is really miserable. The game goes beyond not being meant to be played. It actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. But I do want to show you the rest of the level. So when you're ready to continue, press enter and I'll put a bridge over the maze. Gives the option to either keep trying, just reveal. Oh, 
Oh yeah, that's not possible. Yeah. We weren't even able to go up. You have to press enter. Right? Wall 128. And to be fair, it's not like this is the first game that's needed some modification to be playable. Like the house cleaning game. You know, that one used to actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. I had to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the game would actually end. But that game had an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? The only way past this challenge is to randomly guess the six-digit code. Like randomly. the Invisible Maze, it's frustrating to me, because it's the opposite of everything else that Coda has made. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me, except a lot of my time. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. here. I'll put the code on the ground for you here, though, so that we can move on. Oh my god. Um. This is the last game he's made, he said. The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door, meaning that it's literally impossible to solve from this side. So even if you somehow brute forced your way through the first two challenges and you got to this point, there's actually just no way to progress. And it's scary for me, the idea of Koda cutting himself off entirely, just saying, you know, that's it. That's the end of the conversation. Not giving me any way to fix the problem. I feel like a failure, I guess, when I can't fix the problem. But I can open this door for you, so let me do that. Oh, it is here. Was I a failure for not understanding this game? I mean, I don't know why I would be. It's not like, like everything needs to have a solution. But I feel it somehow. I feel like I failed. And I don't understand why. I remember. It's June of 2011. I'm playing this for the very first time. And as I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know this person. I have no mm. idea who this person is. It wasn't the guy I knew. It wasn't my friend. I had come to so many conclusions from looking at all of his work up to this point, and then suddenly none of them... None of them. I had been trying to, though. That was the thing. For years I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was and, and what he stood for. I asked him so many times to please just tell me what his games mean to him. I asked him please to tell me what the three dots mean. Yes. And he wouldn't. The lighting. I, I just felt so strongly that if I could have connected with him, that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. It was that I needed to see myself in someone else. I needed to be someone other than me. But he stopped and left. And it felt somehow like I had failed. Where 
did I screw up? We're back here. Dear Davey, thank you for your interest in my games. I need to ask you I'm not to speak to me. I'm the reason that you stopped making games, aren't I? It's because of what I did. I poisoned it for you. I don't think what I ever told you this, what do you think? but when I what? took your work and I was showing it to people, it actually felt... <laughs> it felt as though I were responsible for something important and valuable. And the people who played them, they treated me like I was important. They really listened and cared about what I had to say. Even though I was showing your work, it was... I felt good about myself. Finally. For a moment, while I had that, I liked myself. Huh. Narrator out of the lamppost, Davy. And then you stopped, and I didn't have anything left to show people. I I just had to be with myself. And as soon as that happened, there was no feeling at all. Nothing. Less than nothing. What does that mean? Oof. You hope that one day it clicks and that... I'm afraid that I did something really stupid because I don't like myself. Peace with this. That's why I'm releasing this collection of your work, is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything, and so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world, and if I put my name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you, so that I can tell you that I'm sorry. I know I screwed up. If I apologize to you truly and deeply, Will you start making games again? Please, I need to feel okay with myself again. And I always felt okay as long as I had your work to see myself in. I mean, is, is something wrong with me? Because I know that I did an awful thing, and I'm doing it again right now. Like, I'm, I'm showing people your work, but I can't stop myself from doing it. Oh, that's, that's how crazy. badly I need to feel something again. Like, I'm an addict. There has to be something wrong with me. Can I apologize? What if I tell you I was wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think it will, but there's nothing else that I can do. Just, just tell me what you want. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I, I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put in your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. And I want to know how to, how to, I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I'm fading, but all I want is to know that I'm going to be okay. Like parasocial? Epilogue. This is the end? This Times Square?
Davey was the one adding the lamp posts. More, 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 more love, more praise, more people telling me that I'm good. Always more, more, more. It's like a disease. Solution. 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 Whoa. Where'd the train go? Whoa. Wait, but that closed. No? Whoa, that's trippy. What in the Harry Potter? I guess if someone had told me ahead of time that he just really enjoyed making prison games, maybe I wouldn't have thought he was so desperate. I wouldn't have told so many people that he was depressed. He told people maybe that? Maybe he just likes making prisons. stairs even now the disease is telling me to stop don't show people what a shitty person you are they'll hate you Towards what you can see. Feels like you're, you're a parking garage. If I knew that my life depended on finding something to be driven by other than validation, what would that even be? There's a light. <laughs> it's strange, but, but the thought of not being driven by external validation is unthinkable. Like, I actually cannot conceive of what that would be like. Not driven by validation. Validation. I think I need to go. And I'm sorry, because I know that I said that I would be here and I, and I would walk you through this, but I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot that I need to make up for. And so I'm just gonna. And the narrator okay. leaves us. Okay. Are you even supposed to walk through these? I guess you don't have to. But I feel compelled to do it anyways. Just drop. I'm just going to drop here. Oh, I locked myself from this.
Interesting that this is the first block you're able to see from that angle. Go around here. Point of falling lower than the entrance, just to bring us back up. Do we? Does it keep going? Oh, it stops. Feels like we're at the bottom of Times Square Union Station now. And a long hallway, back to that laser beam. Jump into the laser again. Will it make us float? I'm stuck. Yeah, we float again. And I can't see anything. Big ass man's. guide. Oh. That was really a one hour-ish story.
about consuming other people's content. That was a good story. Surprised I haven't heard about this game. Like I just heard about it yesterday. of pirate software is short on YouTube. I didn't know what to expect. I was maybe hoping for more gameplay, but I know it wasn't about the gameplay. Or like, I think I was hoping for more immersive games in this compilation. But... It was a good story. And I was looking for story games. So this will go on my YouTube. And ironically. If you made it to this portion of the video, as you stayed for this part, I'm kind of just sitting in my thoughts. So the developer, Oda. He was just trying to make his create for himself, I guess. And those were all his low points. And then... What was the narrator's name? Fury? Davy ended up sharing the games, and then Coda didn't like that. They stopped being friends. Driven by validation. Is that what I'm doing? I'm not sure. I'll just keep this part raw. No cuts here. Keep the empty spaces.
Create for yourself. Not gonna lie, I picked up this game because I thought I could maybe relate to it too. Which part of me does? But part of me is still... Confused or lost? We're still figuring it out. Definitely still figuring it out. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it here. Sorry for the ramble. You made it at this point. Thanks for watching the whole thing. Hope you look forward to the next story game. Which will probably involve more gameplay. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Like the video if you liked it. Appreciate you.